Hi, I'm Wade Harvey, and today we're going to look at uh, the .NET framework. And uh, this is a very exciting part of the foundation that is built on top of the Windows operating system. Uh, you start with this low-level uh, Windows operating system, then you install a .NET framework. You can have multiple frameworks running on top of uh, Windows uh, operating system so that you can target uh, which framework you uh, want your compiled code to run on. And so what is the framework? Well, it's a virtual machine uh, that includes a large class library. And by a virtual machine, what I'm talking about is uh, it is a the common language runtime part of the framework is the virtual machine. And what it does, it takes uh, your compiled code and translates it to the most uh, efficient code uh, for executing on your particular computer. Um, this uh, also has the advantage of keeping uh, your applications in a, a safe environment so that uh, if your uh, application crashes it'll just crash the virtual machine part and not Windows uh, in its entirety. So why use uh, the NET framework is a good question, I think. And there's a couple of reasons. First, it allows us to reuse large uh, functions that we do over and over again. Write a file, read a file, uh, uh, create a window, create a web form, whatever. Uh, and then it also has security uh, whenever we access an assembly or a DLL, it uh, uh, will check uh, uh, th to make sure that uh, it's got the right version and that the version has not been tampered with. This is uh, yeah, part of uh, looking at the evidence for, for the assembly to make sure that it's uh, the correct one. So the programmer doesn't have to worry about that. Also, memory man management is taken uh, care uh, uh, for us. Uh, when objects are no longer used, uh, garbage collection automatically collects them. The uh, programmer doesn't have to write that code. And uh, it uh, has uh, saved another good feature is that it creates uh, safe sandboxes for applications. Applications run inside an application domain, and this application domain doesn't share variables across the uh, whole operating system. So uh, here, once again, if your application crashes, it just brings down the application domain. So these are very powerful features, and it's amazing to me that uh, the NET framework is only eight years old. Uh, you can see when the major versions are, uh, came out and uh, it's not been around that long and uh, before that there was classic ASP and uh, uh, we've come a long way in the past eight years and this slide shows uh, uh, how we've uh, progressed. At the bottom of the slide where we have the common language runtime. This is the virtual machine that translates your compiled code uh, that uh, came from uh, the uh, uh, when you're in Visual Studio, uh, it compiles it into the temporary ASP.NET uh, files. Or if you're using IIS, the compiled code is in uh, uh, INET pub uh, web root uh, in those folders. And the common language runtime takes it uh, from uh, this intermediate language and uh, converts it to ones and zeros. Uh, so that's the virtual machine part that's running. Uh, the base class library is a very powerful library. These are, consist of when you are in uh, writing code and you type uh, import system in vb.net or, or import uh, it's Microsoft. Uh, these are the modules that are included in the base class library. 
Now the base class library is just a subset of the framework class library, and the framework class library includes these WinForms classes, ASP.NET classes, and the ADO.NET uh, classes. It, uh, when 3.0 came out, we had the uh, Windows Presentation Foundation, which uh, uh, enhanced the graphics uh, that you could use uh, in, using three, uh, 3D graphics and so forth. Uh, the Windows Communication Foundation, uh, this allowed you uh, to in, use improved uh, web services. Workflow allowed you to uh, code workflows in, in Visual Studio. And card space allows uh, uh, you to identify people uh, for security purposes. Uh, in 3.5, we had the addition of Link, which uh, is a, a language uh, that allows you to kind of uh, embed a SQL right into your code, so it gives you a type say uh, where you uh, have intelligence and so forth right, uh, when you're typing. Uh, your queries in, in inside your uh, Visual Basic or C Sharp code. ADO.NET uh, Entity Framework also came out in 3.5. And in 4.0, uh, we have uh, addition of parallel processing, which is uh, a very, very powerful. Okay, uh, this uh, slide looks at the uh, intermediate language concept or it really uh, breaks it down for us and it shows that uh, the power of it uh, is that you can have all these different languages compiled down into a single intermediate language uh, that you could have C sharp uh, VB net code and J sharp all in one uh, project compiled into one intermediate language uh, called the common intermediate language and then the common language runtime, this virtual machine, converts uh, that uh, common uh, uh, intermediate language uh, into well, ones and zeros, which is the native language for the machine. And the common language uh, runtime uses a lot of caching so that if you're running through a loop, it doesn't have to uh, recompile uh, that uh, code over and over again, which is a big advantage over an interpreted language. An interpreted language goes all the way from uh, source code all the way to ones and zeros er, er, on every statement. And uh, so the just-in-time compiler is uh, a big improvement over interpreted language because it, it's uh, using all this caching and so forth to uh, optimize uh, the code a lot better. Another uh, important feature of the .NET framework is interoperability and uh, this involves when you have to go outside the framework. How do you get from .NET to something that's outside the framework like a COM module or a DLL that's uh, outside that? And the way you do it, uh, you, for COM modules you use uh, interop services and they just uh, put a wrapper around the COM module and uh, allow you to access that COM module through this uh, type, uh, gives you type save uh, wrapper. Uh, and then if you're trying to access the uh, uh, other native objects like Windows API, you can use the p invoke feature. And what this does, it just imports the DLL inside the .NET framework and puts the parameters on a, a stack. It allows you to work with them through that uh, technique. And I think it's important uh, to emphasize where this stuff resides in the computer because it's uh, everything scattered in different places. So uh, this slide shows that the framework resides in the Windows folder, Microsoft Net uh, slash framework. And uh, at this level you have the GAC, and uh, you also have uh, uh, the temporary ASP.NET files. That's where uh, the output uh, of your compile pages from Visual Studio goes. This is the intermediate language output. 
and uh, also in these Windows folders you have the machine.config if you're ever looking for that.